Hello, today I'll be creating a basic program to stream tweets from Twitter. I'll be using Python and Tweepy library, and I'm gonna assume that you guys have some basic programming knowledge. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section. So let's go to the terminal. This is the folder structure for the project. I have my main script here, and I created a separate folder to store the keys that I'm gonna show you how to get now. And this one is the Python virtual environment, which you can create if you know how to, but if you don't know, uh, it's completely optional, so you don't need it. Uh, so to get the keys, you go to developer.twitter.com. I'm going to leave the link in the description, and you'll have to register. And then once you're registered, you click on create an app over here. Uh, you'll have to answer some questions, and it's going to be like a little form. But once you're finished with that, a new app is going to appear on the list here. Uh, you go to the details and to keys and tokens tab over here. I'm not gonna click in because uh, the keys are meant to be kept private. But uh, once you go there, you just copy the keys and paste them into your script. And this is that file I was talking about earlier. I'm just gonna paste the keys instead of uh, empty strings over here. And uh, the strings are, are named the exact same as they are on Twitter. So it should be very easy to figure out which one is which. So just paste the keys over here and let's go back to the main script. Okay, and now that you have the keys pasted. Uh, let's start by importing the library. And the first thing I'm going to do is just run that hello world program uh, just to show you that it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because Tweepy is not installed and the way you install it is just pip install. It's literally going to take like two seconds to install. And it's done. And if I rerun the program, uh, now it works. So back to the script. I don't need this anymore. Uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is creating um, a stream listener. Then it's going to be it's just uh, creating and starting the stream. And just to let you know, I am following this tutorial over here. It's on official Tweepy Docs. I'm gonna leave the link in the description as well. And uh, it's also like a three-step process. I'm following it, but I, I want to do it live and I'm just gonna change some things around. Uh, so the first thing is the listener. And the listener is gonna have two methods. Uh, it's gonna be overriding two methods. The first one is on data. And the other one is very important on error. So I'm just declaring my own class and I am extending from uh, Tweepy's stream listener. So this first function here is gonna get called whenever uh, some data arrives to the listener and we have to return true from it so the listener and the stream keeps going. If you return false, it's gonna stop the stream. And I'll show you where I'm getting the function. If you go to Tweepy's GitHub page, you can Google it, or I'm gonna leave the link in the description as well. So, and uh, you go to the page, uh, you click tweepystreaming.py, and in this file, you have, um, you have all the functions you can override. And I'm overriding this one here. And in this function, before returning, you can do whatever you want with the data. And what I'm gonna do is just call another function called process data. Uh, I saw this in a tutorial somewhere, but it works for me, so I'm just going to copy that. There you go. And all I'm going to do for now is just print whatever I receive. But you can also save tweets to a file, you can extract text from them, because at the moment they're going to arrive as objects, uh, which you're going to see later. It's going to look like a big mess. So, and uh, the last and uh, one of the most important things is uh, the on error function. And you can have a look at it over here on the bottom of the docs. Uh, we can actually copy it. I don't have to write it because it's gonna be the exact same. And what you're doing is just listening for uh, status code 420 
And if you get that status code, you have to close the stream uh, because it means something is going wrong, but the stream will keep reconnecting, I believe, to Twitter API. And if you don't close it, they're just going to ban you for some time. And if you keep reconnecting after that, uh, the ban is going to increase more and more. And eventually, probably you're just going to be banned forever or at least for a very long time. But OK, uh, once you have that, we can go on to uh, creating a stream. Okay, and for the stream here, you don't have to extend anything. This is my own design. You can actually just do it in the main function, but I choose to do it this way. And I'm creating an init, which means I can pass some parameters to the to the object when I'm instantiating it. And the parameters I want to pass are the auth keys or the auth object and the listener itself. And when I create the object, what I want to do is actually create the stream. Uh, if you go back to the docs here, uh, there is a line here which shows how to create a stream. So you got to create a listener and this is where you actually create the stream. Uh, just take this and assign it to our own project, uh, to our own object. And of course, we're passing our own auth and listeners. And that's it. But what this does is it just creates the stream. It doesn't actually start it. And what I'm going to do is create a separate function to start the stream. Uh, this is how you start the stream and the track parameter is going to equal to a list of keywords uh, that you want to listen for. So they can be anything. It can be like snow, uh, snow, rain or whatever you you want to listen for. Uh, if you want to get some uh, weather tweets, you might listen for that. But the example they give is um, they listen for Python. So let's just copy this. And actually, what I'm going to do is instead of uh, passing keywords here, I'm just going to pass it as a parameter to the function. So it's going to be a keyword list. OK, and this should work now. All I have to do is create the main function and call everything I just wrote. But before we can start the stream, we have to use the keys that we got in the beginning of the video. And what you use them for is to authenticate. If you go back to the tutorial again, there is a link here which tells you how to do that. I'm just trying to find it. And it's right here. Okay, I'm not sure how the details of this function work, but all it does is uh, Twitter has to make sure that you have the permission to use its API. And the way you do that is you pass the keys. So into the first one, it's and actually before I pass the keys, I have to import them because I'm keeping them in a separate folder. And the second one here is the access keys. Okay, now we're done and ready to go. So I'm going to create the stream object. Okay, and now that we have the listener and odd, I pass them into the stream. And now I can just uh, call start, pass in the list of keywords that I want to listen to, and it's just going to work. So let's go for the default Python keyword. And actually, I'm just going to try running it because maybe I'm going to get some errors. OK, so here it says that I'm giving um, too many arguments to, to the start function. And that's because I don't have um, self. 
over here. Okay, let's see if this works. And yeah, it's working. Uh, this is the mess that we're getting from uh, Twitter. These are actually the tweet objects. So they're not just text, but there's a ton of information in them. There's like location, languages, all the pictures, statuses. There's a bunch of stuff there. Uh, but for now, that is it. You're getting the Twitter stream. And I might make a separate video on uh, the things you can do with it after. But if you want to go ahead and play around yourself, you can just uh, go into this process data function and you can start saving them. You can start getting the text or whatever you need to do with the tweets. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope that was clear and uh, you can actually figure it out from from the docs if you wanted to, but hopefully the video helps some people. I know uh, it's easier for me or it was easier for me to watch the video uh, before I kind of got used to programming from the docs. And yeah, thank you for watching and I hope I see you soon. Thanks.